Hey guys, Jim here. I want to talk to you a little bit now about uh, my second Shirogorov that I just received, which is uh, this one right here. This is the uh, Model 95T, the Model 95 in all titanium. You may recall if you watched uh, my review or overview, I should say, on my Hati, how much I was immediately impressed with the brand, uh, how much I love the knife. These are actually the same model of knife. The differences are, and there's actually going to be a few and they're very, very subtle, which is one of the things that I really appreciate uh, now owning a couple of Shirogorovs is their subtlety. There's a lot more than meets the eye when you're taking a look at these. At first glance, you know, it's a lot like a Chris Reeve. At first glance, it just looks very basic and very plain. Uh, maybe not in the embellishments done in the uh, the milling of the titanium or the, the beauty of the carbon fiber, but it, it's a very simple, very basic looking knife at its core, especially if you view it from this angle. And you look at it and go, well, there doesn't seem to be a lot going on there. The more you look, the more appreciation you'll gain from this brand. And the more you handle them, the more you flip them, the more impressed you'll become. And that's how I felt with this one. And the most significant difference between them is going to be the fact that with the Hati model, you're getting a titanium knife with a beautiful textured carbon fiber scale. Now the way they've done this, it almost breaks up the carbon fiber look. So you might even think it's just G10, but if you look on this side, you'll very easily see that yes, that is genuine carbon fiber. And it creates a nice lightweight knife. Some of the weight is added back into it because they choose to use a very large uh, gear-shaped titanium backspacer with the lanyard loop built into it. So you've got a little more balance there. I think without having that, it would be a little bit too light in the ass end. Then you get to this particular version, and the whole thing is titanium. Both sides are titanium, and they've done that great milling work on both sides. Another one of the subtle things, it's funny because when I had seen the pictures of this and when I had negotiated the purchase of this from my good buddy Barry, who we all know as New to Knives, go check out his YouTube channel. Not only are you going to see some really cool knives and hear some cool commentary, uh, but you can start lusting after the things he has and maybe twist his arm into selling you something <laughs> like I did with this. I badgered him for like four days straight, wouldn't let up. And uh, hey, look, it worked. So keep that in mind. One of the things that uh, I decided when I was buying it was I was going to send this out immediately and have all of the raised areas polished to give it a really nice two-tone. What I didn't realize was it's not picked up in photography generally, but what they've done here is they stonewashed, excuse me, they've, they've bead blasted the frames first, then they've done the stonewash. So each of these areas, each of these lines create a darker effect because, you know, the, uh, you know, the stones aren't getting into every nook and cranny and crevice. And you're going to notice that around the pivot and some other places. So it creates a wonderful three-dimensionality that I thought I was going to have to achieve by doing some finishing. And it's something that I still may consider, but the... The beauty of the two-tone is actually here, and you see that in person. And the great thing is this is a wonderful finish for somebody like me that actually pockets the knife, uses the knife. You start doing polishing on these high points, and that's what's going to start showing scratches. Even just from going in and out of your pocket, um, the fabric from your pocket can start leaving hairline scratches in titanium because it's such a soft compound. So I'm thinking for now, I'm going to leave it as it is, and if I, if I get bored with it after a while and I feel that it really does need it, I can always do that down the road. But for right now, I think it's a beautiful finish, wonderful three-dimensionality, and it's an interesting way that they've done this. There's, it's, there's almost like a pattern that goes out toward the ends. It's a beautiful, beautiful knife. Uh, another difference is going to be the Shirogorov logo is actually going to be set into the titanium here. Whereas on the Hati, they can't do that because of the carbon fiber, so it's laser etched 
into the blade. Depends on you, which, uh, whichever way you think looks nicer. I, I, I like them both for different reasons. Uh, the pivot screw is just just about the same size. It looks a little bit smaller, but the more I'm looking at it, the more they seem to be the same size. They're obviously going to be the exact same blade, exact same blade length. This does have a smaller piece of hardware back there for the backspacer than for the standoff here. The pocket clips will be the same. I'll show you that in a moment. That's another one of the subtle, beautiful things about the Shirogorovs. This is not just your run-of-the-mill out of a parts bin spring clip. It's got a wonderful geometric feel to it. It's It really is a subtle work of art, the entire knife. Even the way they've contoured the cutout for the lock bar. It's just beautiful and elegant and flowing. And they don't interrupt the beauty of their knife by having the lock bar notch on the outside. They do it on the inside, just like uh, you would find on a uh, Sebenza. So... Yeah, I'm madly in love. I really, really am. Uh, I like the clean flow-through design of having standoffs more so uh, than having a backspacer. It's just, it's it's a nicer look to me, and it's a little bit easier for just routine maintenance, keeping pocket lint and dirt and sand and stuff uh, out of the knife. The lockup is going to be the same except for, actually, they did do it the exact same here. I've I've looked at a few different versions of this titanium. This is an early model, so it's still going to have that stainless steel lock insert screwed in. It's actually bolted in. On the newer ones, they, they press fit it or they do something where it's bonded to the titanium lock bar without the aid of that screw. But this being a slightly older model, it does still utilize that torque screw. Overall, it's every bit as smooth. Now, the major difference is on the Hati, this has the phosphor bronze washers. So there are no bearings inside of this pivot, yet because of the way the detent is done, because of the way that they've built this, the flipping action is phenomenal. The only complaint I would have about it is if you're not used to flipping this knife and you're playing and, and carrying a lot of other knives more often and you go back and you try to, to push down on it like maybe a browse or a hinderer, uh, it, it is really going to dig into your finger the way that this is shaped. And you really have to be sure you're hitting this properly. I'm really glad that they do these serrations on here, the jimping on here, because without it, there are times that I'll miss it every now and then by not really paying attention. And it actually hurts the hell out of your finger. But once you've had this in your pocket for a few days and you're not thinking about other knives that you have, uh, the flipper is super easy to deploy. I love the smoothness on this knife. Now, with the bearing system, now this is not the new 4 row 58 bearing system that are on the brand new ones. Uh, this is just the simple bearings. It is smoother. It is noticeable but it's not a tremendous amount of difference. Uh, there is a price difference between these two models, and if you're thinking, well, I'm old, I don't care about the titanium as much, I'm going to do this because I know it's got the bearings, don't let that be the deciding factor for you, because they really do the washers. The way they build this knife, you're, you're not going to see a real difference. It is a bit of a difference, but it's not that tremendous. Overall, I'm extremely happy with the, uh, my decision to purchase this. Uh, and again, thank you to Barry for letting it go out of his collection. It was funny because when I was first kind of gnawing at him for it, um, I didn't realize it until probably the second or third day in. He's like, that's actually one of my favorite knives in my entire collection. And I was like, oh, dude, you know, because I'm not like that. I'm like, dude, if, if it's really something that you love, then please, I'll find one somewhere else. I'm not too worried about it. And he's like, no, you know what? I got this coming in and I, I found a grail or this or that. So, yeah, you know what? I could let it go. It's, it, it's not going to kill me to let it go. So uh, let's do it now before I change my mind, that kind of thing. And just to show you what, a, what an amazing guy Barry is, we've just started to kind of really get to know each other. And so, you know, we've never met. He doesn't know me from Adam when you really get down to it. And he's like, let's do this. He goes, let me send it to you and you tell me if it's worth the money that you're offering. Because I, I kept throwing money at him 
offering way more than what you would typically pay for this. That's how bad I wanted it. And he's the kind of guy where he doesn't want to feel like he's gotten one over on somebody. So he's like, let me just send it out to you. If you like it and you think it's worth keeping, then PayPal me. And that's exactly what we did. And he was really fantastic about it. Boxed it up the next day, got it out to me quick. So uh, anyway, just to go, go check out his channel. He's got some really awesome stuff. Uh, I do notice that this one seems to fire a little bit harder as far as that fast action because the detent is just a teeny tiny little bit stronger than it is on the uh, titanium version. There's not a huge variance, but there's enough that you can most certainly notice it when you're firing these. See, that one just fires so hard. And I'm not doing any different action on these. I love the sound as those uh, lock bars engage. And that's the other thing. I really didn't go into it on my previous video because this was my first experience with any Shirogorov. And I'd only had it in my hands for like an hour or so. When you look at the lock bar, the steel interface there, that's not just going to be uh, for the engagement to the... Uh, to the blade, to the tang of the blade, but it's also going to be your lock bar stabilizer. It prevents it from being overextended. So that piece of steel is actually going down. I don't know if we could quite see it in here. We're not going to be able to. It actually goes down to make contact with the inside of the frame. So it's a very, very useful system. Another thing that I like is if you'll notice the titanium lock bar extends up higher than that uh, steel face does. What that's doing is it's preventing this lock bar from walking further over, further, further, further as the knife breaks in. So it's only going to go so far before it actually locks in at that point as well. It's not going to let it go any further. Another thing preventing that from happening is they have a slightly contoured surface here on the back side of the blade where it makes contact with the blade stop. Now the stop is actually engaging both in the closed position, hitting back here. And in the open zip position, right back here as we were discussing. I'm not sure how I feel about the stop engaging there. Because where it's actually hitting is the lock face. I don't know if it's the exact same spot where the lock bar engages. If it were, I'd have to worry that you're going to get some premature wear. Not that you're really slamming your blades close like that. That's something we don't really do. It's going to slam open more than it's going to slam closed. So I don't know how that system works in the long run. I guess I'll have to carry it for a year or two and see. And yeah, this is another one that's uh, that's an EDC for me. Uh, I got it today. It went directly into the pocket as I was heading out the door. I was lucky to catch the uh, mail service before I left for the day. Went into the pocket today immediately. And I've had a hell of a lot of fun with this thing as most of you on Instagram know I can't stop posting pictures of it. So anyway, I just want to kind of give you a very quick look at it, show you the comparisons, show you how it sizes up, how it matches up. And, you know, it is the same exact knife. Just one gives you carbon fiber and the other gives you uh, contoured and milled titanium on both sides. It's the exact same uh, profile, that very, very, it's actually a full flat grind. I was going to say very high, but it's a full flat grind all the way up. These things are just gorgeous. I'm a huge Shirogorov fan. So I'm going to tell you right now, if, if you're somebody that owns a Shirogorov and you ever decide that you want to sell one and it's not one of these two, you know, hit me up first. I'll probably just buy it from you. Uh, I do plan on having a few of these in my collection. I've been holding out and holding out since the Blade Show for the past few weeks, uh, waiting for a dealer to upload one of the 50 that they had gotten. And you know what? It's, it's been a few weeks now and still nothing has happened. I got tired of waiting. Um, and hey, whatever, man. I know the, one of the ones I was going to get was one of the beautiful mirror polished blades, $1,500 knife. Had no problem dropping that coin. You don't want to upload it. You don't want to make it available. When I call you and you say, yeah, well, no, I'm not going to give you a heads up. I'm not going to let you know when they're going to be uploaded. You'll just have to hope that, you know, you read the newsletter, uh, sign up for my newsletter. And when it gets there, when it, when it shows up, uh, hope that you can get to the website in time before everybody else. Really? Okay. That's fine. I will choose to spend my money elsewhere. That's That's simply the way it is. So... I got tired of waiting, and I ended up with this one, and I'm really, really happy with it. 
So I see probably three or four more Shirogorovs in my future. Uh, I know Robbie is sitting back chuckling right now because he's the biggest Shirogorov fan that I know. And when he was uh, accumulating his collection, I kept asking here and there, is it really that good? Is it really that good? Should I really get one? And he's like, seriously, get it. This is as close to a Sabenza flipper as we're probably ever going to see in our lifetimes. The simple, classic nature of it, not overdone, not overdesigned, not a whole bunch of crap hanging off of it, no crazy, wicked blade profiles. They just went for a serious, smooth, sleek, and finely detailed knife. So I'm, uh, my expectations were exceeded, and I certainly will be uh, <laughs> on the prowl for more. Not this week, though. Don't go hit me up right now. I just bought so many knives, it's utterly ridiculous. So I'm going to go for a bit of a cooling off period, maybe for uh, you know two or three weeks. So uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching, as always. And I'm going to do my best to get uh, my next video uploaded as quickly as possible with another set of twins. You guys know I love my bodega. So I had to buy a second one. So that video hopefully will be coming soon. Keep your eye out for it. All right, now I'm going to take off because it's, uh, oh, geez, what is it? It's almost midnight now. Time to uh, upload this video and maybe, if I'm lucky, hit the sack at a decent hour. Good night, guys.